So in the previous video, I showed you inline table value function, which basically means there's no begin and end here. I'm just saying return the result of a select statement so it's inline, it's one line, just do it kind of thing. Now I'm going to show you a regular table value function, which, which one, of the, one of the key characteristics here is I'm going to put a begin, and I'm going to put an end. Okay, but when I do the begin and the end, now since I have these curly braces, if you would, I can do a lot more logic in here, and generally you do need to do a lot of logic in your scripting. These are somewhat small and contrived examples I'm doing in these videos. But uh, basically, uh, first of all, I can't say returns table anymore. I have to be more explicit about the schema of the table, which is, if you remember, the schema of the table is the, uh, the name of the tables for one, but um, the columns, the order of the columns, the names of the columns, and the data types of the columns, all those things make up the schema, which is basically a techni very technical kind of scary word that just means order columns, number columns, data types of columns, the name of the columns, that's it. Okay, anyway, so I need to be a little bit more explicit. I'm going, so in being explicit, I'm going to say uh, my table or whatever you want it to be. This is the variable we're going to manipulate between the beginning and the end. Whatever is in my table, by the time we reach the end, is what's returned. In fact, here I, I have to say, uh, let's put our return down here. In fact, I'm not sure if that's necessary. I wouldn't be surprised. We'll find out. So our return is at my table, and then I have to define the schema. So here, here a good example would be, maybe I just want the order ID and the order date. So let's, um, let's do uh, order ID. Or I could just put the order ID. The names don't have to match. Um, the order ID, and I believe this is an int. And then uh, order date. Order date, I'll just match this one up. Why not? Uh, is date time, I believe. Okay, so now we have defined the schema here of the table. And what's going on? Incorrect syntax. Eh, I don't know. Let's, let's keep going with this. So now I have my, my table. So now, this is what's going to be returned. And so I need to insert data into this temporary variable table-ish thing because that's what will be returned from getting them orders. So, so let's say insert into at my table. Uh, and I could do values directly. I showed you, I showed you in previous video how to do values. But let's let's select. Um, let's insert the results of a select query. Select uh, order ID, and then it's order date from orders where customer ID equals at customer ID and then return. Okay. Let's run that. And still incorrect syntax. Oh, I forgot. I just looked it up. I have to put table out here. Okay, very good. Run. Oh, okay, good. Notice it worked. It worked. So, go down here. Select splat from get num orders. Now, out here where we consumed get num orders, I didn't change any of that code. It's the same as what we saw in the previous video. It just so turns out that um, my table here, the the definition of what's being returned, this is a table valued function. I'm, I'm returning a table and since it's not in line, uh, I actually get this variable with a certain schema and whatever I insert in that table is what's inserted. So I could write a while loop here or something and and do something a little more interesting than this insert. But basically for the purposes of this video, or these videos, uh, concerning user-defined functions, I just want to show you a little bit of the syntactical differences, and then also some of the semantical differences between a inline, or sorry, a scalar, a scalar user-defined function, an inline table, inline table value function and a normal table value function. Uh, again, I, I think it's a little bit too much of a headache. I wish the SQL designers just said, hey, here's user-defined functions and you say what you want to return and the syntax will be the same no matter what. But unfortunately, there's these differences and nuances we have to put up with.